www.thelovelyfriendshow.com. And today I'm going to be showing you and expanding your mind on how to make ube puto, the gluten-free Filipino cupcakes. And so let's hit the kitchen. Yeah. Definitely hit the red subscribe button and the bell. And since you're right there, hit the share and the like button. Why not? cups of rice flour and then we have one cup of water one cup of evaporated milk we got one can of coconut milk one can 13.5 uh, fluid ounces of coconut milk and then we have ube extract here by McCormick um, ube extract for the flavor uh, or whatever flavor you're gonna be doing and we got uh, half a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt right here we have one cup of um, cane sugar and one cup of regular sugar we've got three tablespoons of baking powder and then we have some cooking spray it's canola oil but you go ahead and use whatever oil you have so first thing I'm gonna go ahead and combine my dry evaporated milk uh, or aka dry milk into the one cup of water here and go ahead and mix 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 I know you could go ahead and make uh, have it with milk but it's just better with evaporated milk very traditional uh, way of making it making puto so that's why we're using evaporated milk okay so we need four cups of So to put in the liquid of coconut milk, uh, we're going to make a well in the middle of our rice flour and then pour in our evaporated milk that we made earlier. Mix, 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 and pour it in in the middle. Go ahead and start folding it. As you fold it in, we're going to drop our coconut milk and fold it in. As you keep on folding it in, the consistency is going to change over time and that is kind of like a cakey consistency, but eventually we want it kind of... Um, thick and starchy. So just keep on folding it in. You see how lumpy it is? That's not good. So we're gonna have to now put in the whisk. Scraping the sides is good because you want to make sure all that rice flour is becoming this liquid consistency. And then eventually start using a whisk. Okay, so I've been kind of whisking this by hand. Now, if you have a machine, you can go ahead and use a machine. Um, we do have a KitchenAid in this kitchen, um, but I'm just kind of using a whisk. But if you have a KitchenAid or a machine, uh, go ahead and use that. But it's just more realistic to use a whisk and or even a fork. If you don't have a whisk, then you could go ahead and use a fork to uh, make this mixture. Now go ahead and notice that we do have some lumps in the mixture. So we're gonna go ahead and swift it. Now you might think like, eh, we don't need it, but actually we do. So we're gonna go ahead and grab another bowl here. Okay. We have a strainer here and we're going to dump all of our uh, batter into the other bowl. See, it's a, little it's a little lumpy still and you still see the 
mochi or the rice flour on the sides. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that it's not lumpy. Again, look at that. There's more flour here. So, as you can see, we do have lumps here. We'll just kind of press it down and make sure that it gets really mixed in. So I usually don't uh, do it more than one or two times, but just double check on your batter here and make sure it's not lumpy. Okay, take out the lumps. Okay, wanting this consistency to be a little thicker, then you let it sit in the refrigerator for an hour or two overnight. Or if you're in a quick hurry like I am, then just go ahead and proceed. I made a mess in the kitchen. If you're not making a mess in the kitchen, then you're not having fun in the kitchen. Okay, so it's pretty smooth now that we swift it. Here's a little side note. It's ready for the sugars to go in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and dump in our cane sugar. And then we're gonna go ahead and or fold it in, since I have my spoon in here. We'll just go ahead and mix it in here. Then we're gonna put regular one cup sugar. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the salt. Oh, yeah. Now we're gonna go ahead and put in our three tablespoons of baking powder. Now this is plain puto right now. And this is the time um, when you mix everything in, you wanna put in your uh, flavoring extract. Now that uh, the mixture is pretty good with the consistency, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in some ube extract. We're gonna go ahead and drop three tablespoons pretty much. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and grab our muffin tins. Now what I'm gonna be using are a really small tin here. And I'm gonna just go ahead and spray them. Make sure that it's coated. Now if you have banana leaves, um, I would put them here. Or you, if you wanna use cake liners, but I'm just not gonna use cake liners today. I'm just gonna do it like this. If you don't have a fancy brush, go ahead and just use your fingers. Fingers work out. Make sure that it's evenly, like, everyone is coated nicely. So it doesn't stick. Now it's ready to pour. So you're just going to go ahead and fill these up. Now you're going to fill them up, like, three-fourths of the way. Um, because you want them to be a little bit over. Now that I've done all of that, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the steamer. Let's hit the stove top. Here's my uh, steamer. So we have down here um, boiling water and then our rack and then our lid. Steam's ready now. Moment of truth. 10 minutes has passed. Now we're gonna double check and see how it looks like. Oh wow. That's a duddy. Oh my god, this is horrible, dude. What the f Oh my god. <laughs> what? what happened? It's so funny because here's how I f here's how I messed up. You actually need to have double the stack because when it's only 
boiling water down here and you steam, it's such a direct steam that it makes cochinta instead. And that's how I got that result. But to fix it, you need to definitely have indirect steam. And so definitely that's why you need double the stack and or if you only have a steamer like this and you want to have puto, you want to make sure you triple stack inside. Okay, now I have two pans here instead of just one, two, and three. So these actually stack higher, but I only have the two. Anyway, so you need to have boiling water in the bottom and you have the steamer. But if you have another rack, to have indirect steam is the best. And what I did was have another cake pan so that it could be steaming literally on the top layer of the steam to cook the puto. Just a little science in between how to make puto because I have noticed that other YouTube recipes not necessarily explain this whole indirect steam. So, um, because I have definitely have watched all these other puto recipes and they don't necessarily explain this part. So hopefully you enjoyed this part of me explaining how puto works. And then slicing some cheese on top of it is optional, but it's very traditional. Just need a little bit. Right. Hi! Nice! And now we're gonna put the cheese! Now we're gonna go ahead and put some cheese on top. This is optional. Uh, we got cheddar cheese. And traditionally, <laughs> puto is um, with a little cheese on top. So, we're using cheddar cheese. You could use other cheese if you want. <laughs> but I recommend um, hard cheeses like cheddar or Monterey Jack. So now we're gonna put the lid on it for one minute. One minute's best. All right. And now, <laughs> you just take it out and let it rest for a couple minutes and that's how you make ube puto. What they look like? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> she said it looked like nipples. <laughs> but they are delicious putos. <laughs> Real quick, are you liking this kind of content? Definitely hit the red subscribe button and the bell, so that tells me that you like this video. All right, my eaters. Hopefully, this no recipe was really simple enough for you to make. Puto, the gluten-free Filipino cupcakes at home. Look at it. Isn't it amazing? Okay, hopefully, you enjoyed a cup with me. That being said, this is a hashtag collaboration top chef challenge video with awesome Instagram foodie friends of mine. And so definitely check out their Instagram posts as they did a what can you make with cheese cheese category. Anyways, so that being said, always expand your mind, explore your palate, and let's just keep chasing the flavor, my eaters. I'll see you in the next video. Here's a shout out of the week from the last uploaded video. Did you know that we did a cookbook? Check out our link in the description box below. And remember friends, expand, expand your mind, explore your palate, and let's keep chasing the flavor, my eaters. See you in the next video. See you in the next video. I'll see you in the next video.
next one. Cause you know, you special. They came out like <laughs> I'm just still gonna put cheese on. <laughs>